thank you for joining me today as it's time to finally return to Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. You know, it's really a sh quite a shame that I had to leave so early on, you know, just two episodes in, and it was just one episode for YouTube, right? So uh, <laughs> it, it, it kind of sucked that I had to, you know, take a break. Uh, again, it wasn't my choice, but I had to take a break so early on, right after starting the new anime. You know, those first two episodes are just fantastic. Episode two specifically is just, uh, it is such a fascinating episode. It's just jam-packed with intriguing ideas and themes and symbology. Um, yeah, you know, it was it was a tough point to, you know, step out. It was a tough point to kind of go on break uh, for last show. So really excited to get back in there. And of course, this is quite a long anime. Um, so, you know, I do hope, I do hope that I can get to a point that uh, I can get to them a bit faster. You know, maybe, maybe I can change a few things around uh, in terms of the amount of stuff I'm doing on the channel, maybe, I don't know, but um, I, you know, I do want to change it. I hope in the run, in this run for Full Metal Alchemist, I do change it at some point to get to them a bit, a bit faster, right? Um, you know, some, some anime or some shows are not built for um, the schedule I'm on right now. I think Death Note really suffered from that. But yeah, you know, I just kind of checked out my own reactions to episodes one and two and the post-episode discussions. I don't need to do a recap or anything. I think the best thing to do is to just get right back into it, uh, get into the flow of things and get this going, man. Let's get let's get going again. Uh, I've missed it, man. I've missed this. This I, I'm made for this, you know? <laughs> this is my element, so I've missed it. Um, so yeah, you know, before I get into it, just a few things. If you're interested in full length for this episode or maybe even full opacity or maybe even early access to the next episode right now, consider checking out the Patreon page. And of course, there's perks for many of the other series on the channel. Um, so yeah, you know, consider checking that out. Consider subscribing to the channel to support the channel or, you know, consider dropping a like uh, or comment or maybe consider following the Twitter account. Even that supports the channel because Twitter is a powerful tool for a content creator. You know, Twitter really helps you uh, expand your reach, right? Uh, or grow your reach. So yeah, you know, you could just do that. You know, not everyone has to be a patron. Right? You can do many other things to support the channel uh, if you like the content enough to support. Uh, but yeah, you know, all those options are there for you. Links in the description and the pinned comment and the pinned comment is right at the top. It's always at the top. You cannot miss it. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> somehow, so, somehow people still miss it, but it's right at the top, right? And that usually has links and updates, uh, all that good stuff, right? Okay, I think it's more than enough for a comeback intro. Uh, so let's jump right back into it. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Simple enough, right? See, Al still needs to draw the transmutation circles. <laughs> okay. Ooh, okay, so this town, Lior. Oh, it's about to happen again, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but you can already tell the town folk are. They thought alchemy was a miracle, right? So. Resurrection to the dead? Eternity? Ooh. Immortality, huh? <laughs> yeah. They would know. Ooh. Okay, that's alchemy. But yeah, you got the red rock. Or stone. Uh, good point. And I didn't see a transmutation circle. He might be he might be hiding it, of course. He doesn't want people to see it, right? Hmm. I've been there, man. This reminds me of that scene from uh, Breaking Bad. Gretchen and Walter. Huh. He's being quite aggressive about this. I agree. Yeah, the first part she's spot on. They're not... Humans aren't things, of course. 
Again, that's interesting given his spiritual experience, right? But again, Ooh, Icarus. Oh, look at Al. Though he's also speaking of himself, right? Yeah, he's being quite aggressive. I feel like he's trying to get a reaction out of her. There it is. <laughs> that shot, though, really drawing your attention to the stone. <laughs> the music, man. Look at him. Looking down on them. Elevated position. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> now, is it similar to Isaac McDougall? Was he given this stone? Exploiting the, the people, huh? Mm. Okay. There's a shot again. Ah, right. Okay, so. <laughs> this is gonna happen throughout the series, isn't it? Their outfits are kind of similar, aren't they? Cornello and Ed? Did she accidentally pull the trigger there because of the noise she heard? <laughs> is that so? Whoa. Yeah, he's been doing some stuff, huh? That's right. No transmutation circle. Now, Oh, that felt like a reveal again. <laughs> it sounded like a Pokemon dying. Yeah, this almost kind of feels like another intro episode. Oh. That's the exact same. That's the exact same thing he's promising Rose. <laughs> yeah, he's speaking of himself earlier. And Icarus, of course. Mm. Okay. <laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs> Oh, look at this. Hmm. Now it's Al's turn to talk to Rose. This, yeah, this has to be tough for her to take, though. Hmm. Ooh, okay, he's trying something. He's drawing the circle. But the fact that he still needs to draw a circle is interesting, right? Given... How things played out in episode two. Oh wow, yeah. She's really latching onto that idea, right? It's almost unthinkable for her to, you know, move on from that. Go on, he's a pawn as well, right? <laughs> He's being quite open about this. <laughs> ah, that's why. <laughs> oh, is that? Turn into a speaker, a big ass speaker. 
<laughs> yeah, he's about to catch a beat down, isn't he? Whoa! Rebound. So he couldn't handle it, huh? Oh shit. God's hand. The god of uh the hand of God. You need arm strong here for this battle. I'll handle him. He's kind of like a berserker right now. Fist of God. Whoa. There it is. Look at that. The hand of God. Second time that's happened. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know if it was a fake. It was allowing him to do these things. Essentially, there's clearly so much that's unknown about the stone. Mm. やっと前の体を持ってに戻せると思ったのにな。賢者の意志を渡して。もう。し、still Mm. That's not his job. He can't. Yeah. I mean, it's no one's job to tell you, really. Mm. Walk your own path. Mm, that's great. A transition at the end there. Yeah, he's gonna catch a beatdown. Ah. So he was given it by them. Lust. The potential seven deadly sins? Oh. Oh. Whoa. Ooh, father. Is is father the is father uh, that uh, character I saw? There's a symbol again. Uh, is father that uh, character I saw for like a split second in episode one? Um, great standalone episode, actually. You know, I love these earlier episodes in a long series. Uh, the self-contained mini-drama playing out over the span of an episode, right? As the grand plot of the story gathers steam as well. Um, you know, ticking along. Uh, and given the given the episode count for this show, for this anime, you know, I'm sure there's many more episode-specific stories to come, right? I think the themes of this anime really lend itself to this type of format, right? At least the themes established so far. And there's, are, and there's already quite a bit that's been established. And then, of course, this episode had to take on a few more things, right? The science versus religion dichotomy, right? Or, or mysticism. Uh, you know, being one with the god or a god or the absolute. Um, you know, the culture of dogmatism and fanaticism. It feels like this might be a reoccurring theme, you know, throughout this anime. And that doesn't just go for religion. I think um, blind faith in just science as well is being explored. Here, authority in general feels like it's going to be a reoccurring theme, right? Uh, applying to the military as well, you know, going back to the exposition uh, from the first episode. And I think these types of episodes are great for world building as well. Uh, you know, creating that rich and dense foundation. And it's already doing that, right? Just three episodes in. You know, I want to see more of this world and the unique people inhabiting it, right? Much like 
uh, a brilliant RPG does, right? This this actually has a lot of similar elements to a great game. You know, even the original score uh, really puts me in that mood as well, right? And of course, more of those beautiful backgrounds as well. Um, you know, actually, since the first episode, I've really been getting this game feeling from this, right? The, the world of a game, uh, of a great RPG, like I just said. So, you know, I'm all in. I'm all in to explore more of this um, fantastical world they're putting together. Though there are some uh, elements rooted in realism as well, um, not too far from our own history, perhaps. And also, you know, I mentioned that there's been so much packed into these first three episodes. This episode had a lot of elements of an intro episode as well, right? Um, it feels like I've seen like three different variations of it at this point, um, uh, you know, throughout these first three episodes. You know, it, it had the first time reactions to things like their botched attempt at human uh, transmutation, Ed's arm and leg, you know, the big reveal once again. Now, one of the more interesting aspects of this episode um, uh, was the fact that Rose was much like Ed. Right? She had this unbreakable faith and determination that her loved one will be returned to her, right? She clinged on to that through religion, right? And the belief that this emissary of God is capable of this miracle he keeps going on about, right? And, you know, on the flip side, Ed put, it, Ed put his faith in science, right? Uh, in alchemy. Again, established as a science in this story's universe, right? Um, yeah, it, it seems like a really... Um, mystical, fantastical uh, thing, but in this series, especially once again, you know, reiterated in this episode that it is, um, it is a science in this universe. So both Ed and Elle saw the similarities, right? They knew how she felt. I mean, she clings on to this even after Cornello has been proven to be a fraud, right? She has tunnel vision, essentially. Um, you know, she's been holding on to this idea uh, for so long, you know, to keep her moving, essentially, her coping mechanism, right? Because the idea of facing and accepting that loss of, you know, her loved one is almost unthinkable. Much like, you know, Ed couldn't let go of his mother's death, right? Uh, to him, it was kind of unthinkable. Like, uh, he simply had to try something, right? Um, before accepting it. Um, he wasn't ready to accept it, essentially. And you see that both Ed and Al took their own unique approaches in helping Rose understand their mistake and the devastating price they had to pay for attempting to bring someone back from the dead, right? The unthinkable. Um, and you know, Rose and Ed's conversation inside the church was great. I thought it was great. Uh, you know, a lot of interesting back and forth, a lot of valid points on both sides. Um, and ultimately, you know, there are great things and lessons to be learned from both sides, right? Both have something to offer. Um, it's once it goes to the extreme end, right, be it religion or science in this case, in this specific case of the episode, that's when it becomes a bit of a slippery slope, right? But of course, there's, you know, great ideas to be taken from both science and religion, right? That's, I think that's the key here, you know, to take the, take the best of each uh, or take the best that each has to offer. And I, I feel like that is going to be a running theme throughout this um, series. And, you know, Rose was spot on. People are not things, you know, right? right after Ed goes through a list of basic ingredients making up uh, an average adult, right? And, you know, like I mentioned, it reminded me of a brilliant scene from Breaking Bad. You know, it's this uh, flashback scene uh, and it's uh, Walter and Gretchen, right? Uh, in the Grey Matter days. Um, you know, they're discussing the chemical composition of the human body and they're coming up with, or they're coming up a tad bit short, right? Um, you know, Walter feels like something is missing, that there must be more to a human being, right? There simply must be more. Um, so I thought there's a lot of great parallels here, um, uh, especially going back to episode two as well and some of the lessons both uh, Ed and Al learned. And of course, to end off that reference, the Breaking Bad reference, Gretchen brings up the idea of the soul. How about that, right? Uh, but again, Walter's response, there's nothing but chemistry here, right? So in that sense, uh, Walter's character, um, kind of reminded me of, um, God damn it, I keep mixing up their names, Ed, right? Uh, so I thought it was a great parallel, a uh, great parallel to, you know, this episode and episode two to that scene from Breaking Bad. Now, Ed made it pretty clear to Rose that they don't believe in gods or creators or a god, right? But, you know, that being said, he's had this really spiritual experience, essentially, um, not too long ago. I mean, it's a few years ago now, but, you know, he did have this really, uh, 
a strange experience. For him, it must have been strange, right? And he, I doubt he has any explanations for that just yet. Um, uh, in fact, you know, in episode two, one of the things that came out is that he didn't really tell Al about it. Now, that's not to say that he met Rose's concept of God, right? The truth appears to be a bit of a different concept, right? It brought up the concept of one, right? Um, you know, it referred to itself as many things, the world, the universe, um, God, truth, you, all of those things, but also one, right? Kind of like the unity of all things, material and spiritual. So it was a bit of a different concept than just the one, you know, almighty being that is God, right? So again, you know, it's not to say it was Rose's concept of God. You know, in that you had the depiction of the tree of life on the gate itself. In this episode, I saw uh, the Ouroboros symbol on both lust and gluttony, right? The eternal um, cycle of life and death. And in that opening before the intro, they also show the infinity symbol, right? This is around the time the narrator is explaining the, princi the principles of equal exchange, right? Um, they also brought up the idea of eternal life and resurrection. Now circling back to Ed and uh, Rose in the church, the, the back and forth, uh, you know, it, it was clear that he's being extra skeptical, right? In front of Rose to get kind of like a reaction out of her, to kind of get a rise out of her. Um, you know, get her to introduce them to the father, to Father Cornello. Later, he does try to show Rose the price he had to pay, right? For encroaching upon God's territory. And you know, this is what I really liked about this approach he took. You know, he framed it in a manner that was relevant to her, to her beliefs, right? So he was able to let go of his um, stance on things, right? Um, and he framed it in a manner that, that would have been relevant to her. So, you know, I really like that approach he took. Also in that church conversation, he did bring up the idea of Icarus or the myth of Icarus, right? And essentially Rose figured out, you know, why he mentioned it, right? And I love the split frame of Al on the left side. Even in that metal helmet, right? They're able to have Al emote, right? I thought that was great. You could really tell how Al was feeling in that moment, right? <laughs> Inside that helmet. So I loved how it was drawn. So. You know, that was great to see. Now, you know, they show the audience right in the beginning of the episode, you know, why these things are happening in Lior, right? You know, through showing us the town folks' reaction to Al's alchemy, right? Immediately establishing that the alchemy or alchemy itself isn't really a known concept here, right? Or essentially they misinterpret that as a miracle, right? And of course, Father Cornello exploited that, right? Uh, Cornello, Cornello, yeah. Uh, and he exploited the people and, you know, used them as pawns or he... he his ultimate goal, his plan, the long-term plan was to use them as pawns in this um, religious army of his, right? Uh, a, a, an army of fanatics, essentially. So, of course, that in itself is more commentary on society. I mean, this episode had quite a lot to say, didn't it, right? And speaking of Al's alchemy, he still uses transmutation circles, right? So something is a bit off there, right? I don't think I have all the information yet. You know, there's something missing here because, you know, he also took part in the human transmutation. So, again, you know, I discussed this in the in po in the post episode uh, portion of episode two, right? But yeah, something's going on here. How come Al still needs to use transmutation circles? Um, you know, they they even mentioned that their trainer, right? Um, that you know they didn't need to use transmutation circles. Uh, yet here you have Al who is using transmutation circles. So I, I feel like there's still a missing piece here. Something's going on. Um, because if he had the same experiences as Ed, right? Again, that's that's still unclear. Um, because, you know, uh, Ed asked him and, you know, Al didn't remember anything like that. So um, there is something missing here. Now, earlier on, I mentioned um, that they brought up the idea of eternal life and resurrection, right? Now, you know, I've seen an attempt at resurrection, uh, quite the hellish and nightmarish one at that, a uh, botched attempt. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if there is a take on eternal life at some point. Um, in fact, I'm expecting that at some point, to be honest. Um, you know, a, a take on immortality. And much like how, you know, it's taboo um, to... Uh, to... Uh, to perform, goddamn, lost, <laughs> brain fart, to perform uh, human transmutation, I think uh, it might have a similar take on immortality as well. 
you know, for things such as that, you know, resurrections and uh, immortality and eternal life, there's usually a substantial cost. It's just one of those things in storytelling, right? Ah, yes, uh, you can be immortal, but there is a substantial price to pay, right? Uh, something kind of like a cursed existence. You know, that's that's the type of um, idea I'm expecting this series to have. You know, if if I go off of their take on resurrection. Now, you know, going back to Father Cornello, uh, you know, he certainly had some assistance, right? Uh, in fact, he was just a pawn in this large... Uh, much larger, you know, storyline that's going on behind the scenes here uh, that's kind of lurking in the shadows at the moment. Um, you know, much like how he was using the town folk of Lior as pawns or was hoping to use them as pawns, uh, he was also <laughs> just a pawn, right? So much like Isaac McDougall, uh, it appears that he was given or provided this uh, Philosopher's Stone or the Red Stone. Let's call it the Red Stone for now because it's not even clear yet if that is the Philosopher's Stone, right? Essentially, there just isn't enough information on the stone just yet. You know, for us, the audience, it goes as far as uh, the things the Elric brothers know about it, right? And they only know these things from reading about it, you know, reading about this elusive uh, stone. So that's all the information the audience has as well, right? Um, you know, reading about it is one thing, but actually, you know, handling it or experiencing it firsthand is certainly something else entirely, right? Uh, physically, it's a different experience, I'm guessing. So reading is one thing, but, you know, actually having, in, having it in your possession must be something else entirely. So, yeah, you know, um, there is a lot of unknowns still about this stone, um, the Philosopher's Stone. Now, based on the knowledge Ed has, he presumes it to be a fake, right? Uh, an imitation, a recreation. Yet, it certainly allowed Cornello with, uh, or it allowed him access to some really high-level alchemy, right? And it was certainly beyond his level. And Ed, Ed and Al knew this. They, they saw this. You know, this is beyond his uh, level of alchemy. Uh, and in fact, it was so beyond his level that at one point, it kind of backfired, right? And uh, I believe Ed called it rebound. And I believe that's the second time he's uh, mentioned that term. Uh, the first time, I think, was in episode two, right? And of course, you know, they, they noticed that it was allowing him to ignore many of the principles of alchemy. So, you know, even, even if it doesn't end up being the um, uh, Philosopher's Stone, this red stone is still quite substantial, right? Even if it is a temporary uh, power-up, you know, from the looks of it. Now, that's twice that they've been close to it. Uh, I mean, they were really close to it, or at least Ed was really close to it this time. But, you know, both incidents, it broke and disintegrated, right? The last time being Isaac McDougall in episode one. Perhaps there's kind of like a half-life attached to it, you know, a limited time attached to it. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm also trying to say that is there a connection here? You know, the, uh, like the Elric brothers getting close to it and it just kind of breaking off and disintegrating. I don't know, let's see. And lastly, this brings me to the person providing uh, these stones, Lust, uh, who is once again accompanied by gluttony. <laughs> and as expected of Lust, you know, she has quite a commanding presence, right? She's charming, she's attractive, and quite dangerous, of course. All those things kind of go together, right? And of course, gluttony is essentially how you would expect some, someone or a character named gluttony to be, right? <laughs> yeah, nothing too deep there, right? But, you know, that being said, that's two of the seven deadly sins. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and assume there's going to be five more, you know, that there's a group of them. Of course, both of them had the, the Ouroboros on them, uh, a similar or like a customized variation of it, uh, essentially. So I have to be on the lookout for that. Right, so if if indeed these are two of the seven, I still need to see uh, a take on pride, wrath, uh, greed, envy, and there's one more. There's one more: pride, greed, envy, gluttony, lust. Um, sloth, right. So yeah, that makes seven, right? So that in itself is also exciting because that means there's uh, these boss fights, essentially. Again, you know, like I said, it, it reminds me of a, a great RPG. Um, it has a lot of great similar elements. You know, the music is phenomenal. It's this grand fantasy adventure music, right? And the, the characters and the setting uh, and, and the magic system. It, I mean, it really could be such a phenomenal RPG, right? Uh, but yeah, so... Essentially, I have five more of these uh, seven deadly sins to look out for. And 
you know, they're part of something larger, clearly, you know, something lurking in the shadows and pulling strings so far. And again, you know, Lust mentioned father. Father is not going to be happy about this. So I'm, you know, I'm, you know, if I'm going to guess, I'm going to say it's probably the, that person I saw in uh, episode one, a quick glimpse. I saw him twice, just a really quick glimpse as Isaac McDougal was about to do his thing. But yeah, so I'm guessing that's father, you know, the big boss, the head honcho. And of course, uh, in the conclusion of episode one, you see that Lust is in contact with someone from Central, right? So again, let's let's see how that develops, right? Uh, could one of the uh, could one of the remaining five be in Central? Even, I mean, it's that, or they have a rat. They have an insider that gives them information, right? But yeah, I think that's about it for this one. Uh, that was actually a lot of fun. A discussion for this. You know, I've had a lot of fun uh, doing the post episode portion for these three episodes I've seen so far. A lot to discuss, a lot of, you know, fascinating and intriguing themes to, you know, get into. Uh, so, yeah, you know, really excited for more. Uh, so, if you enjoyed that, consider dropping a like, consider dropping uh, some comments, give me your thoughts. Um, if you're interested in early access to the next episode right now, or perhaps even full length or full opacity, consider checking out the Patreon page. Uh, the link is in the description. And of course, not everyone has to be a patron. It's just an option. Uh, but you know, you can simply just uh, drop a like. You can subscribe to the channel. You can follow the Twitter account if you're into social media, because that helps um, the channel uh, grow its reach, right? So yeah, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, but yeah, you know, the options are there for you. You know, links are in the description. Okay, so that's about it for this one. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for your time. And I hope to see you again soon for the next one. Until then, take it easy.